Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy and to Elite Dangerous. Today we're taking a quick look at the weapons in the game. Um, and first I want to go through the different metrics that I am going to compare the, the weapons with. We first have the weapon type that is of course as the name is just the type of weapon. Then we have the versions that the weapons come in in both the small, medium, large and huge slots. So these are if, you, if they are available in fixed, gimbaled and turreted. Um, that depends on the size and the weapon. Then we have the power draw, um, which is the amount of power that uh, it's going to draw from um, your power plant on board your ship. Then we have the distributed power draw, which is the amount of power that your weapon will draw from your distributor once uh, the weapon is active. The thermal load is the amount of heat that this um, weapon will generate each second. The damage type is, of course, the type of damage that the weapon will um, will put out, and it comes in thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Then we have the damage per shot or damage per second. That depends on the weapon, whether it will, it will make sense what we go through the weapons, if it's damage per shot or damage per second. The DPS, damage per second, should be fairly self-explanatory. Rate of fire, um, rounds a second, if it makes any sense again. Maximum range, so what's the maximum range you can use the weapon. The falloff, that is the range at which the, the weapon will begin to lose some of its damage due to it being outside its effective or its optimal range. So if you're further away from the falloff range, you'll begin to, um, to lose some of the damage from the weapon. Shot speed, that's the speed that, um, that your projectile is flying through the air. Clip size, in case your weapon has a magazine, that's the amount of... Um, of clips you can have the magazine ammo capacity the maximum amount of ammo you can carry on your ship and finally the reload time in uh, seconds which of course is the time it takes to reload a single magazine now before we start all the weapons that i've compared here are all the two uh or the not two sorry a medium fixed weapons because that's the only category or not the only, that's also the small and fixed but the medium fixed is one of the categories where all the weapons that i'm looking at today is available so to make this a fair comparison, I'm using the medium fixed weapons um, to compare. So let's start by looking at the beam, the burst and the pulse laser, which is the three laser types that are available in the game. The beam laser first is a continuous firing beam that you turn on and will fire the target until you release the trigger and will stop firing. The burst lasers will fire um, small bursts of intense uh, light or air laser. So it will be like a, like a small rapid machine gun firing, um, where the pulse laser is more um, pulsing like um, like the beam from a lighthouse. Maybe that, that it will turn on for a short period and it will turn off again, and it will, it will cool down. Then it will turn off again and it will cool down again. Um, so that's the pulse laser. Okay, if we put up the stats here for these weapons, and of course remember these are the stats for the medium fixed weapons. We can see that. Um, all of the lasers comes in fixed, gimbaled, and turreted in the small, medium, and large uh, weapon slot. And in the huge variant, it only comes in fixed and gimbaled. Um, so the power draw, we can see that the beam and the burst laser both have similar power draws, almost identical. Actually, the burst laser is slightly higher than the beam. Um, but the pulse laser is um, fairly... Um, a fairly decent amount better than uh, than the two others. They use quite uh, a bit less power. So if you have a power hungry build and you want to fit lasers, um, you should consider going for pulse lasers. Now the distributing draw is very, very high for um, for the beam laser. It is a very very power hungry weapon, the beam laser. Whereas um, the burst and the pulse laser is kind of um, yeah well a sixth of what you use uh, with the beam laser. And it's the same story with the thermal load. Very high thermal load on the beam laser. Um, and it can be uh, a tr very, very difficult to um, to fit beam lasers on uh, on a ship and keep them active. Um, so beam lasers would probably do better on slower turning ships, I guess, because you are not going to be able to um, to keep your lasers active for as long. Because if you're fighting smaller, more nimble ships, they will fly past you, and you will have plenty of time while you're chasing them around, turning your ship to um, to cool down your lasers. But Again, as we can also see if we look at the DPS, the DPS on, uh, on the beam lasers are the, by far the best of, uh, of the three lasers. So again, if you're using this on a large ship, you'll probably do pretty well with a, um, 
with a beam laser um, because you can get that very intense damage once you finally get people inside your crosshair. Um, but if you're in a smaller, more nimble ship, maybe you could consider going for either a burst or a pulse laser because you might actually get a better effective DPS out of the weapon because you're able to keep it active um, for longer. You're not going to have so much downtime as you're going to have um, when, uh, when you're fitting beam lasers, which is of course not included here. Um, the rate of fire, of course, with the beam laser is infinite because it fires continuously. Um, and the rate of fire here is again in seconds, and we can just see that's the cycle that it goes through. That's how often, uh, for instance, the burst laser will fire its, its small bursts of, um, of energy, and how quickly it takes for the, the pulse laser to cycle through one cycle. We can see range is similar, three kilometers on all the weapons. Keep in mind, this varies from weapon to weapon. Um, so look up the values yourself. And for the fall off, note here on the on the lasers, the fall off is actually pretty bad. You need to get very close to be very to be effective with your beam lasers. Um, only the uh, with the lasers in general, only your beam laser actually has a better range than the two others of 600 meters, where the two others burst and pulse only get 500. That means if you go if your target is further away than 500 meters, if you're using a medium fixed laser you'll begin to lose damage. You'll begin to lose some of your DPS because the weapon is not effective at that range. So keep that in mind. Um, but again, remember, larger weapons might have long, larger, uh, larger fall off. So this might um, might vary. Shot speed, of course, is uh, 300 million meters per second, which is the speed of light. So practically infinite. Um, clip size is infinite on all the lapses. Ammo size is infinite. There are no magazines. You just don't have to reload anything. And then, of course, the reload time is zero. So that's the main benefit of uh, of the lasers in general is that they do not have a magazine. So you don't have to spend time reloading um, and you don't get caught on a reload and suddenly you have your target in a beautiful position and he was showing you his, uh, his power plant, but your weapon was reloading. You're not going to get into that situation. Of course, you can get into a situation where your weapons are overheating because lasers do have a tendency to generate more heat than other types of weapons. But let's have a look at some of the other types of weapons. Um, Let's pull off the cannon here. We can see, just as with the lasers, the cannon comes in fixed gimbal and turreted for the small, medium and large size um, weapon mounts, and in fixed and gimbal for the huge. Um, the power draw here is um, in the, the... Outside the brackets is the, the, the actual listed power draw, how much power draw it actually draws. Um, but the, the, the numbers in the brackets are the sustained power draw. That means if you factor in reload time, what is going to be over uh, a long period of time, that's what shows up in the brackets because that actually varies quite a bit for the different weapons, as you can see here with the, um, with the distributing draw and the thermal load. Um, and also the same with the DPS. You can see here also calculated the DPS, the effective sustained DPS that you're going to get out of the weapon if you use, um, and when you factor in the reload. Um, so again, you can see here, if you look at the cannon, cannons, of course, a kinetic weapon because it fires uh, physical projectiles. Um, it's, uh, hold on, let me look at it. It's distributing power draw is just slightly larger than, um, than the burst and, uh, and the pulse laser. Um, but if you factor in the reload time is actually quite a bit lower. Um, its thermal load is quite high, um, but again, it, it's become similar to the burst laser if you factor in the reload. So you will probably see once you fire the weapon, it will generate a lot of heat. But as soon as that uh, magazine is empty, it will have plenty of time to uh, to cool down, to regain some of its power from its distributor. Again, we have the damage per shot and the DPS. We see the DPS here is actually while the weapon is active, it's better than the beam um, laser. But again, the effective sustained DPS is lower. That is, if you can keep the weapon on your target at all times. It has slightly better range than um, than the lasers of three and a half kilometers, but the most important thing is here that look at the fall off. It's also three and a half kilometers. That means this weapon does not lose damage um, with distance. It does, when you're using a cannon, it doesn't matter how far you're from your target. If you can hit it, it will do the maximum amount of damage. Um, but of course, this being a physical projectile, it does not fire at the speed of light. So this shot speed here is 1,000 meters a second, or just over one kilometer per second. 
So with this kind of weapon, you can see it will take three and a half seconds for your shot to hit your target at maximum range, which is actually quite significant. And if you're using a fixed weapon, that means you will have to factor that in to give the target a sufficient amount of lead. And if the target changes direction while you're firing, you might have a harder time actually hitting them. Clip size of, uh, of six. Um, and we can see here, if we look at the rate of fire, that it fires um, half around a, a second. So that means there are two seconds between each uh, shot being fired. So it takes uh, around about 12 seconds to empty a magazine. You're gonna have uh, 120 shots with you, at, um, which is plenty. So again, uh, and the real time is three seconds. So if we compare the uh, cannon to the, um, I think the beam laser is the, the most obvious uh, candidate to compare it with because the damage output is similar. Um, again, it's uh, it's one of those weapons where you will do a lot of damage when you um, um, when you have your target in front of you. But if you get caught on a reload, you can kind of lose uh, and you get into those awkward situations with those three seconds reload. Um, which is not too bad, to be honest, but still. Um, it is, I guess, the uh, the other version of uh, of the beam laser, just with kinetic damage. So let's move on to uh, the fragmentation cannon. The, uh, the fragment cannon is basically a shotgun. It fires um, a lot of small shells um, at once. Um, that, of course, has a very short range. So, again, look at the, the stats here. For the small, medium, and large, we again have the fixed gimbal and turreted version. Um, and the fragment cannon does not come in a huge variant, so you can only fit it to um, small, medium, and large hard points. You can, of course, fit it to a huge, but you will it will only be maximum of a large. Um, the distributing power draw is kind of in the middle, um, a little higher than the cannon, um, but less than the, the beam and the burst laser. Um, no, so that was the power draw. The distributing power draw is actually pretty low. It's very, very low. Um, and the very low power draw is even lower when you factor in the, the reload time. Um, same with the thermal load. Um, very good thermals. You're not going to overheat very much when you're using a, a fragmentation cannon. Kinetic damage, of course. Um, damage per shot, and I will come back to that in a bit. This is damage, damage, no, damage per shot is the damage that you do if you hit with every single fragment in your uh, in your magazine on your your shell so we can see here that it's um that this dps is through the roof <laughs> it's very high but this is of course um because if you look at the rate of fire this can fire five rounds a second but with only a three clip magazine um that means you can actually empty your magazine in less than a second you can just fire off very in a very rapid uh, succession which of course in that short period, in less than a second, gives you a very, very high DPS um, of almost 200. But then you have a, uh, um, a five second uh, reload time, as you can see. So again, very long reload time on these weapons. So it's kind of similar with the, um, with the beam laser, that if you're on a big slow ship, but you sh once you get people in front of you and you get them in range uh, and you have the fragment cannon, you can actually rip their ship apart in no time at all doing over 100 damage in yeah well very very low amount of time but again the maximum range is um it's only two kilometers and the fall off is 1800 kilometers so but again the fall off is kind of misleading because in uh i think the spread on the on the on the shells in 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 your or the fragments in your shell is around five degrees um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is. Um, that means that if you go over 500 meters, your shells will begin to to spread out so much that not all of them are going to to hit. So there's kind of a, a hidden fall off uh, in the ship here, but of course it also makes it easier to hit small ships. And if you hit a small ship with this that has your shield down with a fragment cannon, um, you're pretty much going to rip him apart in seconds. The shot do fire fairly slowly, but again, this is a short range weapon, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Plenty of ammo here, and we already talked about the reload time. So let's move on to the multi cannon. Um, multi cannons come in in the small, medium. They come in fixed, gimbaled, and turreted. In the large, they only come in fixed and gimbaled, and the same in the huge. So no turreted large multi cannons. Power draw is um, is very good. 
Um, so you can fit a lot of these multicannons without using too much uh, power. The same with distributing power draw and heat is very good on these weapons. They don't really require much of your, um, of your ship. Kinetic damage, of course, these are also projectile weapons. Um, we can see that damage per shot is very low. Now the multi-cannon, I should probably say, that that is what the name suggests. It's a small mini-cannon, it's a Gatling gun, a uh, machine gun, so its rate of fire is pretty high. Damage per second is okay. It's actually pretty good. It's almost the same as, uh, as the beam laser. If you do not factor in the reload, if you factor in the reload, you are down to, uh, to the level just below the burst, between the burst and the pulse laser. Um, if you look at the sustained, uh, sustained DPS. So rate of fire, of course, this being a um, small machine gun is very high, very good. You get good range, you get good fall off. Um, and the shot speed is also uh, very good of 1600 kilometers. We can see here the clip size um, is 100 shots per clip, meaning you can empty your clip in something that looks like 13, 14 seconds. And then you have a four second reload and you can carry plenty of ammo, 2100 shots um, on board the ship. Um, Multicannons is one of my, my favorite, personally, um, for kinetic damage to take down hulls, simply because of, um, of the good range that you're going to get on them. Um, of course, you get better range on the, on the cannons, and I'm going to experiment a bit on the cannon, but I don't know, I just, it just feels more fun to open up with those, uh, with those multi-cannons. So let's look at the Plasma Accelerator. Now this is a whole nother type of weapon compared to what we've been looking at so far. The Plasma Accelerator only comes in a fixed version, and that's for all sizes, both small, medium, large and huge, only fixed. But look at the power draw, the distributing power draw and the thermal load. They are very, very high. Um, and that is, of course, <laughs> um, that is, of course, because these the uh, plasma accelerator fires a big ball of uh, plasma, which of course are very, very hot. Um, but again, if you look at the sustained uh, distributing power draw and thermal load, they're not too bad actually. It's still high, but it's not too bad to be honest. Um, these are good because they have a combination of both kinetic and thermal, so they will be effective both against shield and armor. Um, the damage per shot is very high. The DPS is 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 good. The sustained DPS is also good, but again, keep in mind these are only fixed weapons. Um, so even though they do have a good range of three and a half kilometers with a fall off of two kilometers, because the slow shot speed of eight hundred and um, eight hundred and fifty-five kilometers, um, you're gonna have a hard time hitting your targets at long range because again, you have to aim these very carefully, and if you're shooting at fast-moving targets, you're gonna have a hard time hitting them. Um, you have a five clip magazine with an ammo capacity of 100 shots, but look at the reload, six seconds. That's a long time in combat, to be honest. Six seconds for a reload is a long time. Um, it takes around, it fires a shot every three seconds. Um, so it will take, what, let me, 15 seconds to empty a magazine. Um, that is, of course, given that you can hit with every, uh, every shot and before you can get that, uh, that DPS out of the, out of the gun. Um, so realistically, your damage per second is probably going to be a lot lower because it's going to have a hard time um, keeping your reticle on the target. And uh, you won't be able to fire the shot immediately when it's ready because you need to aim in again and make sure that you are just on target before you fire. Because if you shoot and miss, you're not going to do any damage. Which uh, leave us on to, uh, to the last weapon for, uh, for today, which is the railgun. Um, the railgun only comes in small and medium, and again, again are only only fixed. So there are no large, no huge railguns here. Um, and again, we can see the power draw is very high. Railguns are basically a long tube which draws a um, which draws a projectile with a magnetic field through the tube. So of course, they will use a lot of power. Distributing power draw is also pretty high. Um, and the same with the thermal load is actually very, very high, even when you factor in the reload. Um, so railguns do generate a lot of heat. Damage is also mixed between kinetic and thermal. Um, the damage per shot is very good. When you're hit with these guns, it's going to hurt. Um, and the DPS is also, I think, actually the best we have seen so far, um, even after you factor in the reload time. 
But again, keep in mind, these are fixed weapons. So you need to aim them. It has a maximum range of 3 kilometers with a fall off of 1 kilometer. So if you go over the 1 kilometer, you're going to begin to lose damage. But again, you also need to probably to keep people close if you want to be able to, uh, to probably hit them every single time. Um, now the shot speed, I'm not really sure about it. I, for some reason, couldn't find it. Um, but it's just very fast. <laughs> it, they they will they are almost instant, not quite, but they are very very fast. Which of course makes it easier to hit at those extreme races because you don't have to get that much lead. Um, 1.2 rounds a, uh, a second is actually pretty good. So it just takes just over a second. Um, no, sorry, just under a second actually to fire uh, a shot. But uh, look at the clip size. Only one shot per clip. Um, that means instead of it taking just under a second per shot, that's of course, then you need to reload because there's only one shot in your clip and it takes one second to reload. Which means that your effective is actually going to be, instead of being just under one second, it's actually be closer to two. So that's why your effective DPS is actually almost, uh, almost half, almost over half of, um, of, of what you could do if you don't factor in the reload. Um, so again, railguns are a bit longer range, I would say, not as long range as the cannons. Um, but if you're going for that single one hit that's just gonna completely wreck uh, the opponent's ship, and especially if you can do a flyby and shoot it at the last second and then uh, wear off, those weapons I think can be very effective. But anyway, I, um, I think that's gonna be the quick overview of... Uh, um, of the weapons. I hope you found this uh, informative uh, and useful and if you did give the video a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel and until next time I will see you guys in space. Clip size is, uh, is five shots per clip and my computer just restarted. <laughs>